From Quigley Stadium in Malvern, Pennsylvania, the Sports Fan Base Network is proud to present Malvern Prep School Lacrosse. As this afternoon, the Friars host the Bulldogs of Wilson High School in non-league action. Oh, hi again, everybody. My name is Tom Wilms. Thanks so much for joining us today. As the Malvern, Malvern Prep uh, Friars come in with a record of 2-1 and one. last time out on Saturday, a 14-8 to eight win over Everest Academy, who came down from Canada. Will Payton led the way with a hat-trick. Nicholas Potemski, Evan Watts, and Matthew Civitella each had two goals in an extremely balanced and calm attack. Again, very much in charge of pretty much that entire game and possession-wise. Very much thanks to the combination of Rowan Cabajagamonte and uh, Michael Verringer, who downed the face-off spot by a 19-4 to margin. So that's certainly something we're going to keep an eye on here today. As Wilson, they are out of Berks County. They are Reading. They've started the season 1-0 thanks to a 7-5 win over Owen J. Roberts. They are a two-time District 3 champion. They won that in 2016 and 17. Seven consecutive Berks County championships. So it looks like we are just about ready to get this one started. The all-important matchup in the face-off dot about to begin. Rowan Cabahug Almonte and Troy Corson wearing number 43, I believe that is, for the Bulldogs. And right away, the Malvern Prep uh, Friars have possession. And thanks so much for joining us. Uh, nice day here just outside of, well, about an hour outside of uh, Philadelphia's Will Payton. As we mentioned earlier, had the hat-trick last time out. He starts things off. Around now for Evan Lotz. Had the first goal in Saturday's game against the Everest Academy. Comes over now for Nicholas Potemski. And here for Evan Waite. Matthew Civitella. And back for Waite. As he'll stutter step his way to the outside. Tries to spin to his left. Good defensive work. Nice pass across. A little spin move here from Jack Jogerst. And then back up top now for Civitella. Civitella, a lot of room to move in. Fires, and it bounces high, but backed up. And it stays Friar ball. Not even a minute in. We've had our first shot towards the net. So here's Lotz. Double team there. Avoids a couple of slashes. And Wait steers it around the far side. Here for Potemski. Correction is this Joger's trying to worm his way through. Now absorbing a triple team. Fights through it all. Dumps it back behind for Potemski. Trying to spin away from the defense of Colby Williamson wearing number 50. Williamson stays with it. Again, real good possession here from Malvern Prep. Again, no shot clock at this level. As Wade spins to his right. Turns to his left. Takes a shot and he scores. Oh, good wraparound shot as Troy Corson did all he good to stay with him. But Evan Wheat picks up the goal, his second of the season. And it's 1-0 in favor of the Friars. And all the possession belonging to Malvern Prep as Derek Jopp is in to take the face off for Wilson. He may have taken the first one. I may have missed that one. And another clean win by Almonte. That is two straight. Dumps it across the far side. Racing over, though, Frankenheimer to try to keep it alive. Flags, a flag flies, I believe. Nope, no flag. It just ended up going out of play. Oh, I saw a flag. We know what it is. It's the yellow bean bags that are holding up these nets. I saw one on the ground. Well, I'll see all of them on the ground, but I thought it was a flag, so. You know, auspicious start for your broadcasters. Here comes Joey Fox, the Gettysburg commit. And now a flag flies, I assure you. As here is Mason Leonard to start things off for Wilson after the turnover and a delayed penalty coming up here against Malvern Prep. Ethan Stitzel. Lost the handle, and it's finally picked up by Malvern Prep. And Wilson will go to the man up first. So taking the knee for Malvern Prep, will be Will Payton. I believe they called it an offside call. So the first man up of the game belongs to Wilson, as mentioned. Here's Magliotti. Offense runs through Magliotti. Future Holy Cross Crusader. So here's Leonard. Good work defensively in that five plus, uh, four plus one. Again, not really not much of a box. It's kind of a two three that rotates very well. Good sliding defensively. Side of the cage. Trying to dump out in front for Almondinger. 
Gets through him, and it will be Malvern Prep ball again. It's not as simple as it looks to pass across to everybody. And those cross field passes, cross crease passes, they have to connect cleanly. It's not as simple as you, like a video game, you put a directional, hit a button, and it goes right to him. No, you got to put it right into his cross. So the man up has expired. Wilson 0 for 1. Under nine minutes to go here in the first quarter. one nothing in favor of Malvern Prep, and they have possession. Seven lots. Now back up for Kellen Matthias. And over for Drew Petinelli. A couple of names we did not hear much from in Saturday's game. Nice look up top. Fires. Scores! Nicholas Potemski received it high and then fires it low for his fifth goal of the season. 8.32 to go here in the first, and it's 2-0 Malvern Prep. And a timeout will be called to settle things down. I think they pointed the wrong direction. Can't imagine why Malvern Prep would call a timeout, but maybe they did. But the bottom line is they have taken a 2 to nothing lead relatively early on in this contest. It's going to be a quick turnaround for both of these teams. They'll play again on Thursday. Not against each other, but Wilson will be at home against Central Bucks East. Well, we ask you to join us again on Thursday for our next Malvern Prep Lacrosse broadcast as the Friars will host St. Sebastian's. Joe Vasile will have the call for that one. Another 4 p.m. start here on the Sports Fan Base Network. And I would imagine this being a Wilson timeout. It looks like they're kind of a short bench compared to Malvern Prep. So conditioning may play a factor. It does look like they have maybe about seven or eight on the bench. Well, Malvern, they may have double that. Of course, easily easy for them. They're at home, and they also have their JV team playing to our right. And they're up two to nothing late in the first quarter. I believe that's the JV team. So, hey, they have a lot of players to draw from if they want. As we have another draw at center, and, well, Almonte wins it again. That is three in a row. That is going to be something that everybody that the Friars play and have to deal with is his uh, prowess. Even if you get him out of the game, Verringer, at least in the viewing that I had on Saturday, was quite good in the faceoff X as well. Jogers gets it up top now for Evan Wait, A lot of room to fire his way in. Stutter step to the outside. Trying to get to the outside angle. Back behind for Lots. Lots all the way around the far side. Moved by Civitella. He stood up by Gilmore. And back here for Jogers. He'll reverse. As that shot comes in, they score! Evan Waite, another one. Second of the game, third of the season. 7.48 to go here in the first, and it's already 3-0 Malvern Prep. By the way, programming note, Thursday's game will not be broadcast, but it will be certainly here if you want to make it on out here to Malvern Prep. Next broadcast isn't going to be till April. Is that April 3rd that I see? We can check that again. Yeah, that's April 3rd. Another face-off win for Malvern Prep. That is four in a row. Potemski tried to get out in front. And it's taken by Civitella. Civitella leads the way with ten goals. Had two in the last game. Four each of the two games down in Maryland to start off the season. As we have a ground ball, but it's finally scooped up by Civitella. And taken by Jogers. Tries the far side for Lotz. 7-10 to go, first quarter, 3-0. In favor of Malvern, prep two goals by Evan Wheat. Here's Will Payton. I'll pass through the legs of Jogers, because back to the center line. And we may have a penalty away from the play. We do. It is going to be against Wilson, so Malvern, prep. We'll go to their first man up of the game. Taking the knee, Joey Fox. 
Long stick midi who's going to be heading to Gettysburg. So huge chance for Malvern Prep. And they have been more than solid in this one, both in the faceoff dot and offensively. We haven't seen them play much defense. But now we'll see their man up for the first time today. Nice look onto the crease. Low to high scores. Eric Spanos picks up his first goal of the season. 6.43 to go in the first. It's 4-0 Malvern Prep. Practically all alone in front. Had enough time to fake high and then dump it low. So a 4 nothing lead now from Alvern Prep. They're one for one on the man up. And we'll go to the faceoff dot again. Mentioned it on Saturday. We'll mention it again here today. Someone needs to figure this out. And even though it went off the official, it's another Malvern win. A 4 nothing lead for Malvern Prep. You may see the scoreboard saying 3, but I can assure you it's 4. 2 for Wheat, 1 each for Potemski and Spanos. 6.20 left to go here in the first quarter. Colin Houston getting his first touches of the game. Evan Lotz, and back behind for Will Payton. Matthias on the far side, back up for Houston. Houston drives to the right, trying to sweep his way through. It throws it back behind for Will Payton, looked at by Andrew Strauss. Very patient attack. Again, we mentioned earlier no shot clock. There's only the stall warning. You don't see that called very often in the first. Nice pass out in front. Cutting through was Potemski, but forced wide of the cage with help from Joey Fox. Now he goes around the far side. Back up top. Good sweep to the right, but unable to get through was Drew Petinelli. Ball down. Petinelli chases. Had body position and kind of sidestepped. Scooped up by Gibble, but he shouldered out of play. And it will be a loose ball push against Malvern Prep. And Wilson will get possession. See if they can get some consistent play here. It's Cam Magliani. It's only their second real offensive threat. One turnover earlier. They had a man up. Couldn't get anything going. So here's Ethan Stitzel. Jack Grayson is going to be heading to York College. Back for Stitzel. And all the way back for Mason Leonard. A loud room up the middle. Nice toss to the far side. Back up, though, for Stitzel. It's a real nice collapse there on Powers. Magliotti tries to drive the cage. Draws the double team. Nice slide ball down. Picked up by the Friars. Jake Brownlee gets the ground ball. So still awaiting the first shot towards goal by the Wilson Bulldogs. 4-0 lead for the Friars. 4.23 left to go here in the first quarter. Calmly moving it up far side. Kellen Matthias. Yeah, for Drew Petinelli. Gets inside the restraining box and then goes right back out for Colin Houston. Substitution still being made for Malvern Prep, fresh off the bench. Keenan O'Connor out of Wayne, Pennsylvania. Now for Houston. Back behind X. Now for Petinelli. Trying to spin to his left. Goes over for O'Connor. Here's Potemski. Goal line extended. Goes back behind. Then reverses. Trying to come out in front. Gets his hands free. Takes a shot, but a nice save. Braden Skipper. Makes the stop. The freshman wearing number one. And the first save of this game. Here's Leonard. Gets over the center line. Now could be a four on three rush. He gets a step. Cuts underneath. Takes a shot. Didn't seem to come out of his cross well. That goes well wide. But it is backed up by the Bulldogs. Down to 3.15 to go first quarter. And here's Stitzel. Now for Leonard, Mason Leonard, that is. Tristan Almendinger, the senior attackman. Back now for Leonard. And here for Stitzel. 
Mitchell way deep for Malvern Prep, and he causes the turnover, and he'll scoop it up for the ground ball as well. Gets over the center line. Trying to get a fast break going. Still has it. Can take it himself. Takes a shot, and it goes high, but backed up, and it stays Malvern Prep ball. Back here's Lotz being chased by Strauss. Good job by Strauss to force him way outside. Back behind X for Potemski. He's looked at by Williamson. Potemski. Ooh, a couple of shots there on Peyton's mask. I don't think the officials saw that. Powering through here, Petnelli. Nice work around. Shot comes in. Saved by Skipper. Bounces near side. And backed up by Wilson. So they'll get possession with 2.10 to go here in the first quarter. Skipper goes up the middle. Looping pass here from Magliotti. They'll try to get through against Carlini. Goes all the way around the far side. And back behind the X here for Stitzel. On the near side, Mason Leonard. And four-goal lead for Malvern Prep. So Wilson not panicking. Again, you can score quickly in this game. Leonard goes to the left. Tried to spin to his right. Caused turnover. And scooped up by Civitella. Here's Houston. Pass too high for Potemski, and it'll be Wilson Ball. So 122 to go in the first quarter. Skipper being harassed by Payton. Long pass up ahead out of the cross of Fox. Loose ball. And finally scooped up. Lost a lot of yardage, so to speak. Oh, nice cut, but lost possession. But it drops back for Strauss, who tried to pass it up ahead. Fell out of his cross, and it will be Fryer ball. Under a minute to go here in the first quarter. It's been all Malvern and Prep. Lots back behind. Almost triple teams looking for cutters the whole way, but it's worked all the way around for Jogers. He isolates and sweeps to the near side. Powers through one check. Takes a shot. Uh, easy save by Skipper. Right at the hip where the stick basically already was. Outlets quickly now for Fox. And a quick clear. Forced to the outside. Lost possession. Ground ball on the near side. They continue to battle, and it's taken over once again. This is Max Jogers. And the first touch by Pettit. I don't think he's really... I mean, not his first touch, but certainly hasn't seen much of the ball today. Down to 18 seconds to go. Here in the first quarter. Will Payton's back behind. Under 10 to go. Gets around the cage. Keeps possession. Trying to get his hands free. Now double teamed. Keeps possession. All the way back up top. Petnelli a shot and a save by Skipper. Outlets, but that is the horn and the end of the first quarter. So a first 12 minutes dominated by the Malvern Prep Friars. They lead 4-0. We'll take a break here on the Sports Fan Base Network. Welcome to Granite Run Buick GMC. Here's what some of our customers have to say. There's more of a family atmosphere here. Thank, Thank you, you Granite, Granite Run. Run. Thank you, Granite 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 Run. If you're in the market for a new car or truck, do what I did. Go see my friend Ryan Irish and his team at Granite Run Buick GMC. These guys are the best. And that's why we welcome you to Granite Run. Visit us in person or online at graniterun.com. Fans, Malvern Prep offers day camp, sports camps, and summer courses for boys and girls on our beautiful 103-acre campus. Our camps are designed to help your child get ahead and try a new sport and make new friends, all while having fun. Lunch is included for sports and day camps. Before and after care is also available. For more information and to register, visit malvernprep.org slash summer. As we head into the second quarter, 
Malvern Prep leading Wilson by a score of four to nothing. Evan Wheat with two goals, and Nicholas Potemski with one, Eric Spanos with one. Faceoffs dominated by Malvern, so a huge key again. Those faceoff wins, you win, you win the ball. You can a kill time, force the defense to work real hard, and obviously the only way to score in this game is to have possession of the ball. So we will switch sides. Wilson in the red. And Malvern Prep is in the white. Again, 5 nothing in draws so far. And another win here for Malvern Prep. All of them. By Rowan Cabajagamante. Junior out of uh, nearby Wayne, Pennsylvania. He's heading to Lehigh. He's already committed. Oh, clean steal here by Isaiah Gilmore. He'll try to get a fast break going. Gilmore to his left, but good transition D. Jack Grayson. We'll wait for some substitutions. Cam Magliotti, fresh off the bench. Now for Ethan Stitzel. Allman Digger. Over for, Casey, for Corey Powers. Powers trying to get for free. Trying to pass across. Stick check and an easy pickup there by Jack Jelgerst. Throws it back behind to the goaltender Pettit. He's being harassed the whole way by Grayson. But he recovers well enough to get the clear successful. Here's Sean Rushton over the center line. Long stick coming in. Looks the pass and spins away. And they'll set up the offense. Evan Lotz back behind. Now Potemski absorbs a couple of chops, a couple of cutters, including Jogerst, but uh, deflected away. A little trouble with the cradle by Andrew Strauss. Hops high in the air and out of play, and it will stay Malvern prep ball. I think Strauss there cradled before he had full possession inside the cross. Nice cut, but that'll go wide on the shot by Petnelli. Payton now for Jogers as he gets it up top. Yeah, for Potemski. And Malvern Prep has been quite patient. Very much willing to stay on the outside until they find cutters and wait for mistakes. Potemski. Stutter steps to the outside. Hands free. Takes a shot and he scores. Nicholas Potemski fires it high for his second of the game, sixth of the season. And it's now 5 nothing, Malvern Prep. Speaking of mistakes, again, just a missed slide. A little one-on-one -on -one play there. And very rarely do you get that straight-in shot high to high to get back behind the goaltender. But he was so tight to the cage. Just fired it over the shoulder of the goaltender, who was actually anticipating. Just a little bit of a... Twitch down with his stick. Couldn't get the cross back up. So 5 nothing. Malvern Prep. Another draw. And another one won by Malvern Prep. This one by Michael Verringer. Ball down on the far side. Verringer still with it. He gets dumped and flags fly. Looked like a push from behind. And Malvern Prep goes to the man up. That is nice work from Verringer. Picked up a goal in the last game. Is taking the knee for Wilson. Is Derek Jopp. Second man up for the Friars. They're one for one. Real nice ball movement, collapsing the five. Little fake over, Civitella. All the way back up top.
Potemski tries on the near side as the penalty is released. Everton kept to the outside. Dangerous pass for lots. As we're back to full and even strength. It's right behind him was Alex Gibble. Could have laid him out, but it would have been a jack from behind, so he thought better of it. So back to six on six. It's Potemski back behind. Double team and a clean steal. Well, Mason Leonard then cuts his way through. Good stick check by Potemski. Rolls out of play. And it will be Malvern Prep Ball. Malvern Prep certainly winning the turnover battles. Here's Payton. Back behind. Spanos with a spin move. Takes a shot into the crease. He goes, but he scores. Got tripped up just outside of the line of the crease. Fell right in before he landed. Powers it home for a second of the game, second of the season. It's now 6-0 Malvern Prep. Dominating performance here by the Friars as Verringer is ready to take his second draw against Derek Jopp. A little bit of a trip there, so it stays loose. Wilson looking for a call, but it's eventually picked up by Rushton. Long stick, Mitty. Committed to Lafayette. Steps up. Fires near side for Payton. Nice pass to the crease and he scores. Evan Lotz bounces it home for his fifth of the season. 8.02 to go in the second. It's now 7 to nothing. Didn't seem to get a whole lot on that shot, but it was just perfectly placed. Bounced and then tucks underneath the crossbar. So seven to nothing, Friars. Right now, Wilson just can't get possession. They have not won a face-off in this entire game. And here we go again. Almonte does it again. So clean, too. Just scoops it up on the back of his cross. Turns it around. Is fresh off the bench here as Waite steps in. Trying to pass out in front. Blocked away. Caggio spins away. Thought he had room to take off, but instead dumps it back here for Strauss. Pass up ahead. Intercepted on the bounce by Potemski. Fast break the other way. Pass towards the crease. Deflected just wide of the net. And Malvern Prep will retain possession. Here's Evan Lotz. Will Payton was all alone in the crease. Houston waits for some substitutions, including Evan Wade, who has the ball now. On the 7.07, left to go second quarter. 7-0 is your score. Near side, Houston. Got the isolation. Goes to his left. Back up top, winds and fires, and it goes high. As Kellen Matthias was looking for his first of the season instead. It will stay. Malvern prep ball in the backup. Potemski smartly stayed back behind. Another isolation as Gibble tries to push. All the way back up top. Shot goes well high by Evan Wheat. But again, backed up by the Friars. Wheat looking for the hat trick there. Imagine the eyes getting nice and big. You're only about 15 yards out. But got to get that on target. Here's Houston to the outside. Reluctant to take the left-handed shot, so he spins it away. And back for Waite. Far side lots. Nice move to move. It takes a shot and he bounces it wide. And again, backed up by the Friars. 6.17 to go. Here in the second quarter. Potemski just happy to stay back behind at X while it's basically five on six. But as we say that, he switches with Payton away from the ball. Now Lotz moves it, takes a shot, he scores. Evan Lotz just kind of faked towards the middle. One step to the outside, a cradle or two. 
and fired it home, his second of the game, sixth of the season, and it's now eight to nothing. And right now, Wilson High School just doesn't have an answer. Jop once again moves in to take the draw against Almonte. And a face-off violation against Malvern Prep, and Wilson will get possession off a draw for the first time in the game. Trying to find a way on the scoreboard. Corson gets in. Now it's all the way out for Stitzel. Far side, Mason Leonard. Heading down to 535 to go, second quarter. Stitzel. And we'll say Malvern Prep defensively is really spreading out, challenging just about everything. But uh, Wilson, if they could find a way to string together passes quickly. Stitzel moving in, has somebody in front. As here's Almondinger, takes a shot and he scores. So Wilson gets on the board again. They just found that little spot inside of the defensive box of Malvern Prep. Nestled in there, waited, and fired it home. for well, the first goal of the game for Wilson, they trail by seven. So although it wasn't a clean face-off win, possession after a face-off, absolutely huge, obviously, uh, for the Bulldogs and any lacrosse team on the planet. Face-off win, but being held on the play was Jop. So that is two straight possessions by Wilson. They'll try to get back into this game, trailing by seven, heading down to the five-minute mark of the first half. Magliotti gets inside the box. He goes right back out. Dumps it over for Leonard. Leonard for Stitzel. And now Almendinger. Now for Powers. All the way back up top. Too high for Stitzel. Bounces up ahead. And over and back violation here against Wilson. It will be Malvern prep ball. Quick transition here from the Friars. On the crease. Shot and a save by Skipper. Yeah, the defenseman Carlini. Right in front of the cage with the long stick. Speaking of long stick, a little trouble here by Kakios. But gets away. And here's Joey Fox to get over the line. Four oh five left to go in the first half of play. And all Malvern in this one, although Wilson does have the last goal. So here's Leonard. By the way, if you hear any extraneous whistles and buzzers, there's the JV game going on to our right. We'll give you a score update on that when we get the chances. Here's Stitzel. Corey Powers. Nice move by Grayson, trying to get out in front. Forced wide, takes a shot and he scores. Even while getting pushed. Grayson fires at home, 3.27 to go in the first half. And Wilson's on a two-goal run, trailing low by six. So a little momentum heading into the second half of play. As Derek Jobs got to have some confidence winning the last two draws. Battle here, and this one is won by Veringer. And now moving up, Cooper Frankenheimer wearing 24. Sophomore right here in Malvern. And the turnover will be Wilson Ball. Didn't see the signal. 
So here comes Corson. Pass up the middle, but it is intercepted by uh, Frankenheimer on the ball on the ground. Rushton runs right into his man, but gets inside the box and dumps it on out here for Civitella. Under three minutes to go in the first half. 8-2 Malvern. Pettinelli. Now for Jogers. Thought about going around. Said running backs his way across. Draws a double team. Gets it over for Civitella and flags fly. Civitella goes to his left. Now here's Petnelli. He tries to get around on the right. Goes to a knee. Tries to pass across. Loose ball is picked up by Wilson. And we'll have a third man-up situation for Malvern Prep. One-minute slash call against the Bulldogs. The senior Cole Caggio is guilty. And a chance here for the Friars to end this two-goal run by the Bulldogs. Civitella winds and fires. It goes high, but it is backed up by Spanos. Nice switch. It's taken here by Potemski. Back up top. Not much of an angle. Fires it wide. This time it was Spanos looking to pick a corner. One fifty-six to go here in the first half. Potemski not being pressured. Back up for Jogers. Now Payton winds and fires. That's blocked in front of him. Getting in the way of that was Joey Fox. Ball's down. Fox chases it down, wearing number eight in red, and scoops up the ground ball. And a timeout has been called by the Wilson Bulldogs. 1.32 left to go here in the uh, second quarter. We'll take a quick 30-second break back in a moment here on the Sports Fan Base Network. Hi, I'm Marty Bystrom, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. In my experience in Major League Baseball, I know how important it is for high school athletes to gain exposure. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the Sports Fan Base Network. If you are a small to medium-sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866-PAYEASY. One thirty-two left to go in the first half. A game that has been dominated by Malvern Prep. Balance scoring. Two goals each for Evan Waite, Eric Spanos, Nicholas Potemski, and Evan Lotz. A goal each on the Wilson side. Tristan Almendinger and the Jack Grayson. And they've scored the last two, trying to claw their way back into this game. But it is an 8-2 score. Timeout was called by Wilson. As they'll start things off on the far side, Jack Grayson about to scoop it up. Mentioned earlier, senior attackman midfielder heading to York. Double team on the ride. Uh, Grayson gets away. Nice step up by Lotz. He's looking for cutters to just uh, get over that center line. Finally finds somebody. It's Almondinger. Gets inside the box. It could be a little odd man rush. Spin move by Powers. Back up top. Circling away is Magliot as uh, Megalotti. And finally slowed down by Wilson. Really good transition D by Malvern Prep, even though they kind of, well, they almost relented on a fast break, but they recovered well. Magalotti to the left. Under a minute to go. Goes one-on-one -on -one with Mitchell. All the way across. Low pass. Powers has trouble with it. Trying to scoop, knock down the play, loose ball, push, and it will stay Wilson ball. 
And a soft little nudge from behind. As that pass is low, gets away from Grayson. And it's, it'll be an over and back violation. Malvern prep balls. It's picked up by Lotz. One of the fast, uh, the quick restart. Didn't get it, but still finds a way to power through. Takes a shot and a save by Skipper. And he outlets quickly now for Corson. Under 30 seconds to go. Corson turns on the speed. And he gets inside the restraining box and calls the timeout. 24.3 seconds left to go here in the second quarter. I think Wilson recognizes an opportunity in this sport. Again, they're kind of getting a little warmed up as far as the uh, faceoff is concerned. You can get back into games quickly. So a six-goal deficit. It's not like it's in hockey where it would take pretty much a miracle to get back. Eight to two. To come back from eight to two is certainly doable. Okay, just got to get hot again inside the faceoff dot. And get some solid possessions and no panic. The one disadvantage you have is if when you lose the faceoff or lose possession, there's no shot clock to help you out. So like in the college game, every 80 seconds, you at least know that either a shot's going to happen or you'll have the ball before that. Malvern Prep could very easily stall, but again, a little early for that. So a chance here for Wilson. I wouldn't necessarily necessarily say hold for last shot. Maybe wait till 15 seconds, get something going. Maybe get a shot from the outside, make sure it's backed up. So they can get a second bite at the apple, so to speak. That's exactly what the Wilson staff is uh, talking about here. Headed by Bill Waldron, third season. Impressive 42-6 and six record for Waldron. The ball's on the near side in the stick of Jack Grayson. 21 seconds to go. Little switch back behind. Still has it. 15 seconds left. Goes around to the right looking for cutters. Has nothing. Takes it himself. Eight seconds. Trying to get his hands free. Good job defensively by Joggers. Turns around. Takes a shot. It is high. Backed up by the goaltender. And let's see if Pettit will just try the home run pass with under three seconds to go. Long pass towards the crease, and that will do it. So we've hit halftime as Malvern will take a break, leading 8-2 to two here against Wilson High School. We'll take a break as well. Back with third quarter action in just a few minutes as you're watching the Sports Fan Base Network. Hi, I'm Tommy Green, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. When I was in high school, it was very important to me to show scouts what I could do. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the sports fan base network. If you're a small to medium sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866-PAYEASY. Welcome to Granite Run Buick GMC. Here's what some of our customers have to say. It's more of a family atmosphere here. Thank, Thank you, Granite, Granite Run. Run. Thank you, Granite 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 Run. If you're in the market for a new car or truck, do what I did. Go see my friend Ryan Irish and his team at Granite Run Buick GMC. These guys are the best. And that's why we welcome you to Granite Run. Visit us in person or online at graniterun.com. Hi, I'm Marty Bystrom, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. In my experience in Major League Baseball, I know how important it is for high school athletes to gain exposure. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the sports fan base network. If you are a small to medium sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866 Pay easy. Welcome to Granite Run Buick GMC. Here's what some of our customers have to say. It's more of a family atmosphere here. Thank, Thank you, Granite, Granite Run. Run. Thank you, Granite 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 Run. If you're in the market for a new car or truck, do what I did. Go see my friend Ryan Irish and his team at Granite Run Buick GMC. These guys are the best. And that's why we welcome you to Granite Run. Visit us in person or online at graniterun.com.
Fans, are you looking for a way to keep your kids active and engaged this summer? Well, Malvern offers day camps for kids ages 6 to 14, located on our beautiful 103-acre acre campus. Our camps include arts and crafts, group games, fitness, movies, and swimming. Lunch is included. Before and after care is also available. For more information and to register, visit malvernprep.org slash summer. Welcome back, everybody. Once again, we are live from Quigley Stadium on the campus of Malvern Prep. About to head into third quarter action. Malvern and Prep dominating this one by a score of 8-2 to two over the Wilson Bulldogs. Two goals each for Evan Waite, Nicholas Potemski, Evan, Eric Spanos, and Evan Lotz. The Wilson goals coming out of the sticks of Tristan Almendinger and uh, Jack Grayson. Just about ready to get started again this third quarter. Wilson is in the red. Malvern and Prep is in the white. And I'm looking to see if they've changed goaltenders. I don't think they have yet. I think Malvern Prep was prepping Colin Corrigan. That is going to be the challenge for uh, John McAvoy is trying to get as much uh, playing time for his three senior goaltenders, and it is Colin Corrigan in goal, but another face-off win here for Malvern Prep. It's dumped to the near side for Potemski, but he's forced outside by Colby Williamson. Leading now in the face-off circle. 9-2 to two are the Friars, and they dominated Saturday, and they're doing so again today. And big factor in this game. Evan Waite all the way around for Matthew Sibatella. Don't know what quarter it's in over in the JV game, by the way. It's late, I believe, in the second quarter, and uh, that is a Malvern prep lead of 12-1. to one. And it's been in the first quarter for the last half an hour, so I have a feeling they're just not changing that uh, part of the scoreboard over there. Right here on the varsity game, it's 8-2. to two. One minute into the third quarter. Drew Pettinelli spins away. Back behind, Jack Jogers. Direction, this is Nicholas Potemski. Low pass, Civitella. Malvern Prep tries to poke it alive, but it will be offside, and it'll be Wilson Ball. There's one step over that center line. It is enough to cause the offside, so a quick restart. Isaiah Gilmore has possession, wearing number five. Corey Powers. And offside again. Actually, it's too many men on the field for Wilson. In hockey, it's a penalty, but in lacrosse, just a violation. So here's Civitella gets over the center line. That was a tough break for Wilson. They got a break on that little turnover. Unforced one as well. So here's Potemski around the far side. Behind for lots. Ooh, I thought he stepped into the crease back behind, but referee right there says no. Spins to his right. Takes a shot and a kick save by Skipper. Couldn't get the cross down, but flashed down the right leg and kicked it out of play. And it will be Wilson Ball on the follow-up. And as long as it's deemed a shot, it can go off of anybody player or the team that is closest to the ball when it goes out of play. That's who gets possession. Joey Fox. Long stick midi. Spins away. Now for Leonard. Mason Leonard gets to a double team, then loses it. Ball still down and calmly moved up here by Mac Jogers. Max Jogers has done a real good job on some of these ground balls. All alone near side Potemski. Goal line extended, tries to get a better angle, but he's cut off by Fox. Shot comes in, that goes wide by Rushton. Oh, I thought it was uh, Wilson that backed it up first, but referee had a different angle from what we had. So it does stay Malvern prep ball. Paid in the round, trying to get through the stick check of Kegios. Now Evan Wheat's all the way back up top, trying to isolate. Goes to his left against Gilmore. Here's side for Petnelli. Gets to his right. Takes a sharp angle shot. That goes wide. Backed up by Malvern Prep. And it stays Friar possession. And 8-2 score. No scoring in this one so far. At least in this second half. Here's Lotz. Nice move to get away from Andrew Strauss. But Strauss follows him up well and pushes him away. 
Evan Wheat around here for Civitella. He goes to his left, spin to his right. Nice pass near side, shot off the crossbar by Pettinelli and goes out of play. But it is backed up by Malvern Prep. Okay, and you go low to high like that. Goaltenders, it's the eye and sometimes the body language. The shoulders droop, and you can lift it right over the shoulder, but a little bit too high on that one. Power move wide by Evan Wheat. Back behind for Potemski. Looking for cutters. Bounce towards the cage. That goes wide. And that is backed up by Malvern Prep. That actually might have been a loose ball push. Either way, Malvern Prep has possession. Potemski doesn't need the pick. Dumped on back. They try to poke it alive, but over and back. And it will be Wilson Ball. Quick restart for the Bulldogs. Trying to find his way through his powers. Forced back for Grayson. And both teams a complete substitution. Mason Leonard. Far side powers. A pretty young team. A lot of sophomores getting significant playing time for the Bulldogs. Essentially quarterbacking is Mason Leonard. He's a sophomore midfielder. Here's Grayson. Pass a little low, but snuffed out by Leonard. I've seen that a few times from uh, Wilson, especially later in possessions. So here's Powers. Looking for cutters, nothing there. Cleanly picked up, though, by Drew Petnelli. And the outlet's the other way. Fast break opportunity. Oh, bad pass, though, away from Payton. I don't know. Maybe Jake Brownlee would have been better served than just taking it himself. And a lot of defensemen with that long stick, they just don't like to shoot. Some of them like to shoot too much, and they get that opportunity. That is kept alive very nicely by Leonard. But some are so desperate to pass that, you know, the defensive team, they can kind of anticipate that. Maybe next time he gets in, just fires one towards the cage. Keep him honest. Here's Grayson back behind. Mason Leonard. Magalotti. Trying to move away from Mitchell. Mitchell stays with him well. Then peels away. Gets away. Shot comes in and he scores. Flags fly after the goal. But a great move there. Wilson has scored three straight. And it's now 8-3. to three. Not only do they get the goal, they could get a man up. If that's after the goal, which it looks like it is. Officials will talk it over. It also could be against Wilson, by the way. They could allow the goal. And then it would be Malvern Prep man up, but we're just guessing here. Waiting to see what the decision is. Officials are still figuring it out. 6.07 left to go here, third quarter. An 8-3 to three game. Now all three officials will talk it over. Just to give you another update on the JV game, they have fixed the scoreboard over there, at least put the correct quarter. It's fourth quarter, 14-1 to one in favor of Malvern Prep in the JV game. So it does look like we'll go right to the man up for Wilson. Just their second man up of the game. Nicholas Potemski will take the knee. So a chance here for the Bulldogs to get that much closer. An 8-3 to three score. And Wilson has scored the last three. On the near side, Mason Leonard. We'll start it off now for Magalotti. 
Now his power is back for Magalotti. Leonard gets it back. And Alvin Prep loves to stretch, even down a man. They really could attack the ball well, make you make quick decisions. Magalotti, Leonard. Grayson up top. Thought he could circle all the way around, wanted the fire, but it was stepped up on. Into the crease they go, but a nice save flag flies. As Corrigan went down to a knee to make the stop. Cross-checking call coming. And this could be a two-man advantage. It'll be a one-minute cross-check. As guilty of the penalty is Samuel Bebavino. So it's now six on four. A lot of room out there, but not for very long. Quick ball movement is the key. Offensively sliding, of course. Very important. Is it right on the crease? They go and they score. Nice look out in front for Almendinger. He gets his second of the game. 5.15 to go in the third. It's now 8-4. to four. four straight goals by the Wilson Bulldogs. That releases them both, by the way. One released naturally. And then just about a second or two later, the goal occurred. So Wilson is now two for three on the man up. And they have come back to make it an 8-4 game. You have an 8-3 on the scoreboard. I can't imagine if they waved off a goal there. We'll have to check on that and see if we can confirm the score. We have it as 8-4, so we'll go with that. Potemski will control from Malvern Prep after another face-off win for the Friars. Leading 10-2 in face-offs. Spin move by Matthias. Gets back to his right. But didn't find much room. Eventually worked around. Jack Joggers back up now for Houston. Colin Houston. Room to his right. Tries to sweep over. Draws the double. Back behind for Lotz. Nice spin to the left. Shot comes in. That goes wide. As Kellen Matthias couldn't find rope. Back behind, here's Potemski. Houston and Jogers go back, back and forth. Here's Houston, trying to swim through, lost possession. Ball's loose. Near side, Fox picks up. Tries to get a fast break going, but batted away by Payton. And taken calmly by Max Jogers. He is so good on those ground balls, even with the long stick. Pass up ahead, a little high, but jumping the grab was Houston. And now for Payton. Far side, Rushton. Long stick, fires, saved by Skipper. Houston has possession. To the outside, Joe Gerst. Thought he could have squeezed through, so it goes back behind. 3.20 left to go in the third. Taken by Houston. Lots of the near side. Has an angle. Takes a shot, he scores. Trying to force him outside was Isaiah Gilmore. Got a little push on him, but there was a lot of daylight over the shoulder of Skipper. And he follow, fo followed it up. A 9-4 game. Again, the scoreboard has it at 9-3. And at the break, coming up in three minutes and nine seconds, we'll go downstairs and confirm if there was a goal disallowed that we missed. And I can't imagine why. Base off violation, and it will be Malvern prep ball. So down to three minutes left. Pass a little high here for Civitella. 
It's one thing we've seen in the two games we've covered for Malvern Prep. Even when a pass is a little off kilter, not perfectly in the cross, Fry's do a good job of recovering. Where we've seen other teams at this level certainly struggle at that. If it's not perfectly in the cross, it's very difficult for them. So here's lots. Back now, Potemski trying to back his way in. Ball down, but eventually worked up ahead. Near side, Civitella. 2.15 left to go in the third. So here's Lotz. Far side shot bounces wide, but it is backed up as Drew Petnelli could not find a way. Two oh five left to go here in the third quarter. Ball down, a lot of pushing and shoving. Loose ball push, and it stays Malfer in prep possession. You know, a lot of contact when somebody has possession, but once it's loose, they'll call that push from behind, that loose ball push every single time. It's a shot from the outside scores. Civitella, his 11th of the season. And it's now 10 for Malvern. And what was a dominating start for Malvern Prep? Wilson, to their credit, tried to fight back, but that one... Maybe the dagger late here in the third. Veringer wins another draw. That is four in a row, one by Malvern Prep. So here's Doherty. Back up for Carlini. Ball moved to the outside as Lotz backpedals against Williamson. 120 to go. Here in the third quarter. Stepping up Jogerst. Now here's Houston. Gets inside the box. Draws a double. Drops it back. Joker spins. Finds room. Steps up. Had no shot. Now here's Houston. Shot from the outside. And he scores. Houston scores his first 58.3 left to go here in the third. It's now 11 for the Friars. So the Friars had a bit of a lull end of the second quarter early in the third, but have now scored three straight to pull away once again. It's the blows and Veringer. Another clean win. A little trouble getting it inside the cross, though. Gets tripped. And it'll be a loose ball push, and it will be Malvern Prep ball. And he won it on the back of his cross. He tried to lift and spin, but didn't have a pocket to get the ball inside. So he tried to shake the stick and try to get the uh, twine loose. Eventually worked out, though, for Malvern Prep. 33 seconds to go in the quarter. All the way back around for Trainer. Potemski behind the cage. Pass out in front. Shot goes wide by Evan Lotz, but it is backed up. And it stays Friar Ball under 20 seconds to go in the quarter. And a timeout will be called by Malvern Prep. Want to set up one last shot in this quarter. 17.4 seconds left to go. We'll take a quick break as well. Back in a moment here on the Sports Fan Base Network. Welcome to Granite Run Buick GMC. Here's what some of our customers have to say. It's more of a family atmosphere here. Thank, Thank you, you Granite, Granite Run. Run. Thank you, Granite 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 Run. If you're in the market for a new car or truck, do what I did. Go see my friend Ryan Irish and his team 
at Granite Run Buick GMC. These guys are the best. And that's why we welcome you to Granite Run. Visit us in person or online at graniterun.com. And spend your summer with Malvern Prep. Malvern offers a variety of sports camps for all skill levels led by Malvern coaches. For more information and to register, make sure you visit malvernprep.org slash summer. So we're down to 17.4 seconds to go third quarter. And the score of this game is still in question. <laughs> we have it at 11 to 4, but the scoreboard is insistent on 11 to 3. So at the break, we are going to... Take a look. Again, I didn't see a wave off. Talked to others here in the press box. They didn't see a wave off. But doesn't mean it didn't happen. Bottom line is Malvern Prep is up big. Looking for one last opportunity towards Cage to end the quarter. Eight seconds left. Looking for a cutter. Shot comes in. They score! Good job cutting through by Will Payton. He picks up his fourth goal of the season. Under five seconds left to go. And that is 12 for Malvern. I don't know if I announced the final of the JV game. I believe it was 15-1. to 1. They turned off the scoreboard over there. But a nice performance by the JV Malvern team. Varsity not so shabby themselves with 12 on the board. With under five seconds to go here in the third quarter. Face-off win by Veringer, but he's going to run out of time quickly. And that'll do it for the third quarter. We'll take a quick break. Back in a moment with fourth quarter action here on the Sports Fan Base Network. Hi, I'm Tommy Green, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. When I was in high school, it was very important to me to show scouts what I could do. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the Sports Fan Base Network. If you're a small to medium-sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866-PAYEASY. Welcome to Granite Run Buick GMC. Here's what some of our customers have to say. There's more of a family atmosphere here. Thank, Thank you, you Granite, Granite Run. Run. Thank you, Granite 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 Run. If you're in the market for a new car or truck, do what I did. Go see my friend Ryan Irish and his team at Granite Run Buick GMC. These guys are the best. And that's why we welcome you to Granite Run. Visit us in person or online at GraniteRun.com. Fourth quarter underway, and the scoreboard is correct. It's 12-3 to 3 in favor of Malvern Prep. Tom Wilmser, thanks so much for joining us. Malvern Prep with possession once again. Yet another face-off win. Leading in that category 13-2, to 2, and actually now 14-2. to 2. We'll explain the... Uh, Wave off of an early goal to us, to you guys. 
This shot comes in. That goes wide. But it is backed up by Malvern Prep. Keenan O'Connor trying the shot there. So it is a 12-3 lead for Malvern Prep. The reason why one of the goals was waved off earlier in the third quarter. Man up situation from Wilson. And at the same time that they scored, there was a second penalty. But they also called it in the crease violation, which nobody up here knew about. That's our excuse, and we're sticking to it. But the bottom line is it's 12-3 in favor of Malvern Prep. Great performance all the way around by the Friars. Shot comes in, goes way wide. Liam Timmons. Yeah, it does look like Malvern Prep is emptying the bench just a little bit. They've got a quick turnaround. They play again on Thursday against St. Sebastian's. Game not being broadcast here on the Sports Fan Base Network, so make sure you come out to Quigley Stadium. Support the Friars. Nice look to the crease, but can't connect to Payton. And that'll go out of play for Wilson possession. Here's Troy Corson. He swims his way through, but absorbs a slash to the head, so that'll be a penalty. Flag flies. Tries to spin away from Rushton. Pass back. That'll be an over and back violation, and the penalty can begin. It'll be a cross check. And you know it's a good call when the offending player is already heading towards the uh, penalty area. As taking the knee for Malvern Prep is Will Payton. So fourth man up of the game. Wilson's been successful. Two for three. And down by nine. Basically have to pace it out to one a minute. Not easy to do. See if they can get something rolling, though. Shot from the outside. Skims, but a save by Corrigan. And Malvern Prep will most likely be able to play this out. Another 30 seconds ago or so in the man up. Or man down for uh, Malvern Prep. The outlet pass is almost blocked away by C Corey Powers. Controlled, though, by Rushton. Over the line to Houston. Getting away Irvine, and the man up is over. Wilson two for four. And at this point, Malvern Prep just wants to keep that clock rolling. Okay, and get some new players out there. Players don't always get the opportunity. As that ball's down, the pass intended for Matthias doesn't connect. The same goes for Wilson. Just want to try to get a positive... Uh, taste in their mouth after this one. Nice spin move there by Mason Leonard. He lost it, spun and got control once again. So here's Powers. Off the tip of the cross of Grayson. Able to recover once again and get inside the box. 7.45 to go. Fourth quarter. 12-3 Malvern Prep. Grayson back behind the net. Looking for a cutter, but it's in the legs of Magalotti. Shoulder barge there by Powers. Keeps it legal. Can't pick it up, though. Doherty with the clean grab on the ground ball. And it's Fryer ball. A nice move to get through. Jackson Powers gets it over the line. Now here's Payton. Spanos, correction. And here's Potemski. And it goes all the way around for Matthias. Under seven minutes to go. 
And Malvern Prep started off this game on an 8-0 run and have not looked back. Here's Houston trying to get inside. Nice look across. Fires and scores. Drew Petnelli. Third goal of the season. And it's now 13-3. Yeah, Malvern Prep really not letting up simply because they're just bringing in other units to get experience. And they're stepping up and playing well as well. This could loom large not only for the rest of this year, but into the future. Again, you have guys who are freshman, sophomore now getting playing time at the varsity level. That'll be huge for the next few years. And late into this year again, builds depth. Another face-off win. For Malvern Prep. We head down to 618 to go here in the fourth quarter. Evan Wheat trying to get free. Takes a shot and a save by Skipper. And Skipper's been under siege in this one. He's made a couple of nice stops, though. Pass near side. Oh, dangerous pass to the sideline for Jeremy Shockey. Trying to spin up ahead, Corson, but timeout called by Wilson. I think they realized not only was it a double team, but the sideline would have been very difficult to get over the center line, but they do it anyway. So a timeout called by the Wilson Bulldogs. By the way, next up for Wilson, they'll play on Thursday as well. They'll be at home against Central Bucks East. So it doesn't get a lot easier for Wilson. Malvern Prep will be here at home against St. Sebastian's. Can they play a pretty aggressive schedule? Heck, if you can bring a team down from Canada to play a, a non-league game. Not saying it's a completely different game, the American and Canadian game, but the styles are certainly different. So if you can get more experience in facing that kind of talent, certainly bodes well for the program, Malvern Prep. Uh, certainly looks like they are in fine shape to start off this season. They went down to Maryland. One of the hotbeds of lacrosse. They went one and one against a couple of really good teams. And came home against the team from Canada on Saturday. Everest Academy now playing here against Wilson. And we'll say the Philadelphia area is starting to become its own hotbed of lacrosse. And talk about lacrosse, you talk enough about Maryland, upstate New York, and Long Island. But right now, Philadelphia... The Philadelphia area is becoming that fourth hotbed. If it isn't already. Of course, the return of the wings certainly going to help that out as well. Just getting more and more exposure for the game. Nice move inside, but Mason Leonard. Got the stick check at the last second. Tossed it wide, but it will stay. Wilson ball. 5.31 to go here in the fourth quarter. Here's Grayson. Looked at by Gavin McGill. Correction, that is Justin Roberts, 44, not 14. Nice duck under there by Stitzel. 5-10 left to go in the fourth. Move to the outside, Leonard. Forced back behind the cage. Back up top. Low to high, outside of the net. No, it goes in. Oh, it snuck past Colin McDonald. It's Cam Magalotti is second of the game. Makes it 13-4. to four. That was an absolute rip. And again, I didn't think he had much of an angle, but it just got past McDonald. So Malvern Prep going with their third goaltender of the game. Pettit got the start. Corrigan played most of the third. And now it's McDonald here in the fourth. And trying to find playing time for all four senior goaltenders, all three senior goaltenders. As Almonte wins the draw, then gives it away. And uh, here's Grayson. Under five minutes to go. Nine-point lead. 
for the Malvern Prep Friars. Magalotti controls. Going to be playing up in the Boston area. Up in New England, College of the Holy Cross. Grayson all the way outside. Back now Powers all the way around, but the ball's down. Keith Carrot chases it down, gets the ground ball. Dumps it on back to nobody in particular, but Colin McDonald, the goaltender, comes out to save it with four minutes left. Being chased by Grayson. Here for Roberts. A little trouble on the clear here from Malvern Prep. Let's see Keith Cara. Tries for Timothy Mitchell. And he spins his way over the line. Oh, not in time, though. Again, you only have a certain amount of time to get over that center line. And Malvern Prep was just a little bit shy. So it is a Wilson ball. Down to 3.33 to go in the fourth. Stitzel. Trying to get through Houston. It's good work by the head coach, John McAvoy. Again, we're seeing a lot of new names, but some players just subbing their way back in and trying to stay fresh. Nice pass to the front of the crease, but Almendinger bounces it wide. And Stitzel keeps it alive now for Grayson. But again, with this scoreline being what it is, nine goal lead with three minutes left to go. Get players' reps out there, but certainly, again, you want to keep the starting units fresh and into the game. That shot goes low and wide. Jack Grayson tried to roll it towards the cage, but again, backed up by the Bulldogs. Very much a workmanlike performance here by uh, Malvern Prep. Went up 8 to nothing. Yeah, I've kind of coasted the rest of the way. That shot goes wide by Cam Magalotti. Wilson put up a run at the end of the second and into the third. A three-goal run. Uh, Malvern Prep has pulled away even further. Up by nine at this point. Loose ball towards the crease. Coming out of his crease is McDonald. And it rolls out of play, and it will stay Wilson Ball. A lot of experience defensively here for Malvern Prep. They've been stuck in their own side of the field for the last few minutes. As the attackmen are getting bored, but this shot goes high to low, or actually no, low to high, excuse me, and it goes well high. Almondinger backs it up with two minutes left to go. And a nine-goal lead for a Malvern Prep. Uh, they will improve to three and one. That shot goes wide. All right now, Wilson just uh, shooting gallery. They get their hands free with any kind of angle. They're firing it towards the cage. And the cross is a game of runs, but nine goals in less than two minutes is probably not going to happen. But certainly Wilson getting aggressive. That shot goes high. Good job by the goalkeeper to back it up, and it's Malvern Prep ball. Good hustle by Colin McDonald. Unsung part of any goalkeeper's uh, game is to know when to escape the crease and back up a shot and chase it down. So Matthias receives the long pass and gets over the line and inside the box. Down to one thirteen left to go. I would imagine right now Malvern Prep just going to play it out. Matthias over now for O'Connor. Matthias gets it back. Far side here for Petinelli. He's going to try to drive his way in. Nothing. Back behind looking for cutters was Potemski. Matthias. Spin left. Spin right. Nothing there. Good defensive work. Into the left once again. Now the double team almost lost it. Back up top and around for O'Connor. Tries to cut his way inside. Good stand up by Stitzel. 32 seconds left to go. It's 
Matthias got harassed, trying to back his way in. Under 20 seconds. And Alvin Prep looking for the best shot possible if they're going to take one. Not just going to fire for the outside. Five seconds left. And that will just about do it. As Eric Spanos hangs on to it. And Malvern Pratt takes this one by a final score of 13 to 4. Goal scores in today's game. Another balanced attack from Malvern Pratt. Two goals each from Evan Wheat, Nicholas Potemski, Eric Spanos, and Evan Lotz. One goal each. Colin Houston, Will Payton, Matthew Civitella, and Drew Petinelli. For Wilson, they had two goals from Cam Magalotti. One goal each from Tristan Almendinger and uh, Jack Grayson. Wilson finishes two for four on the man up. Malvern Prep, one for three. And the faceoff dot dominated by Malvern Prep by a 17 to 2 margin. As Malvern Prep, as mentioned, improves to three and one on the year. Wilson, they drop to one and one on the season. Next up for Wilson. They'll play Thursday at home against Central Bucks East. Next up for Malvern Prep. They'll also play on Thursday here at home against St. Sebastian's, a game that will not be covered here on the Sports Fan Base Network. First, Sports Fan Base Network will be back in April. I think April 3rd will be the next broadcast. And uh, Joe Vasile will have the call for that one. Once again, our final score. The Malvern Prep uh, Friars, 13. The Wilson Bulldogs, 4. For all of us here at Quigley Stadium in Malvern, Pennsylvania, this is Tom Wilms saying thanks for joining us, and we'll see you real soon.